A gorgeous backdrop for tonight's USL Championship contest as the Oakland Roots head to the Charleston Battery for a first ever meeting between the two sides. Tonight's match brought to you by Sphinx. Sphinx making life easier in SC. Jack Edwards here, delighted to be here alongside Ricky Lopez Espin. It's going to be a great one. We'll first look at the standings on the East for the hosts, importantly, in second place. A chance to leap into first on a great run of form, Charleston is. And then again, you're looking at Ben Pierman. The first to 10 to 15 minutes is going to be massive to set the tempo against an Oakland Roots side as of late, has do, done no wrong for Noah Delgado's side. So it's going to be really interesting to tactically match up between these two sides. Two teams should face off quite well. We can focus on some players in specific. Derek Dodson getting into things a little bit. Scored last week a late, late winner. Been the tendency for them all year to score late goals. And he's just been massive since going back to this right back position, picking and choosing his times when to join the attack providing the width for this Charleston battery when you have a player that has a quality, especially when he gets into the final third to pick out a pass, but also score a goal. It just gives you a whole different look going forward. But you talk about this Charleston battery, it's not about the back line. Ikaza, a player right in front of him that's so good at understanding when to, when to step forward, when to drop back and do his defensive duties, likes to move the ball from left to right and really pulls the string from a deep line position. And his relationship between Allen and Ikaza in the center of the park for Charleston battery has been massive. And there's a reason why they've been so successful in this 2023 campaign. He broke his leg early in the year, recovered, making his ninth appearance of the season, his fifth start. On the flip side, we can dig now into the Western standings for Oakland, seeing how they enter into things. Also a top three side, sitting in third place, an impressive run of form for them, five unbeaten. And Noah Delgado, you talk about what it means to the Oakland Roots. They want to get a home playoff game. So how do you get into that top four? And that's so massive for the community of Oakland. And they're sitting extremely well at third place in the Western Conference. And we can dig now into some individuals for them. Important since arriving at the club, J.C. Sedeno. Hasn't missed a beat since coming over from Hartford Athletics. So good at picking his, choosing his times, when to get in between lines, but also just run in behind a striker can beat you 1v1, can beat you through combination plays. And that's going to be a massive question mark for Noel Delgado. How quickly can he get on the ball and get comfortable here today? But you talk about Sedania doing stuff on the offensive side. Talk about Paul Blanchett, the oh, goalkeeper. Yeah. He's been massive. And massive is an understatement for the Oakland Roots time and time. Again, making massive save after massive save. Leads a season with 78 saves. Probably not the stat that you want for the Oakland Roots, but he'll take it, Paul Blanchett, Blanchett, excuse me, showing the athleticism, but also having the ability to pick and choose how to break lines with his passing range. Been an immense keeper for them all year long. Leads the USL in saves. He'll be one of many players to watch out for in today's matchup. It's the first time that Oakland will be heading east to Mount Pleasant, South Carolina. We've got a good one coming up. It's the Charleston Battery taking on the Oakland Roots with some Friday Night USL Championship action on the other side of this break on ESPN Plus. The estimated haul time is now 96 minutes. Sorry, are you still there? Yes. Okay, please hold. You hear all the time about Diamonds Direct's prices and selection and warranties. All true, and all good reasons to give us a visit. But what really sets Diamonds Direct apart is something that's hard to put into words. But you will feel it, you'll know it, from the minute you walk in. It's our unique culture, our passion, our genuine and absolute desire to totally revolutionize the way you experience jewelry shopping. It's why we do what we do. Diamonds Direct, your love, our passion. This is your vacation, your beach, your fields of green, skies of blue, mountains of majesty. You're an athlete, you're obsessed, you're in love, you're in pain, spirit drained, in agony, fighting gravity, because you made a commitment to yourself and others to work on your game, build your frame in blazing heat, exhausted and beat, because when you refuse to yield, your spirit is revealed. You are an athlete. MUSC Health Sports Medicine. Tonight's match is brought to you by Sphinx. Sphinx, making life easier in SC. 
Now, tonight's starting lineups are brought to you by Bud Light. We can first look for the host, Charleston, a similar 11 from the one that had a come from behind win at Birmingham. That's exactly what we talked about, that center of the park for Ben Pierman, Alan Ikaz and Mark Markanich. What does that relationship look like, moving the ball from left to right? And they want to pr provide that supply to Augie Williams. Nine goals on the year. You're going to see Barajas, Avila join the attack and wide areas. Again, that back four, they need to stay compact. They need to keep everything in front of you. But you talk about Ben Pierman. He knows exactly what's asked about these players and expect them to be confident here today. Leading scorer Augie Williams had two assists last time in that come from behind win. Now flip side, Oakland Roots, their 11. Just one change in that right center back position, Emre Clementa coming into the 11. And he's a massive addition to what Nels Agata likes to do. You talk about the wide pl play, Prentice, Diaz, Nane, Gomez. Nane is going to drop a little bit deeper, so you're going to see Gomez press higher underneath Rodriguez. Sedeno and Reed, Trayvon Reed is going to have the ability to get in behind, so you're going to see Sedeno drop underneath Johnny Rodriguez, and for Noel Zagato, it's all about fluidity. That's the way they want to play and make the field as big as they can. They'll try and see if their 3-4-3 can earn themselves some points on the road. Today's keys to the game brought to you by Gildan, a leader in high-quality, comfortable apparel basics located right here in the low country. Ricky, what are you looking at for today? And we talked to Ben Pierman. He said, look, we need to be compact because Sedano and Trayvon Reed have very good feelings of when to get in between lines off the shoulder of our double pivot. So you need to stay compact from front to back to make life very difficult for the Oakland Roots and for the Oakland Roots to get the three involved. You need those three players clicking. You need them confident, especially in around that 18-yard box. You can see the teams taking the pitch in today's matchup in the all-white jerseys. Some nice coloring on the shoulders, the Roots. You can see a net Dre moves for the host, Charleston. Ricky, these home points, very valuable for Charleston in their yellow kits. The black shorts, Augie Williams in the center circle, they'll be heading from left to right to get us underway in this one. Underway in Mount Pleasant. Charleston, again, heading from left to right. Augie Williams, an early contest there, but it rolled all the way back to the key man these last few matches, the nine save performance last time out, Paul Blanchett. He was just so good between the sticks against Detroit City, save after save, but we talk about his progression. Yes, he's so good at keeping the ball out of his net, but the net, excuse me, but this is where it's so important. The ability to bring players in and break lines with his passing range, the progression of football, Jack, we've seen it's a huge emphasis on goalkeepers having the ability to play with their feet. Early foul after the ball was received at the feet for Oakland Roots right at the halfway line. See that one again, just a low pass, getting there first and a little slow and coming in behind. Looked to be Clement, I believe. Just a hair slow. Excuse me, it was Archer going in there. Back to their feet, back underway. Switch of play. At her back. Fighting for it. It's going to squirm free. Prentice on hand was he brought down illegally referee says it was clean hooked forward and Charleston survives the first attack Augie Williams earns the foul or did he commit the foul there in the referee's judgment he committed it you start to see for the Silken Roots they want to press high so you're going to see Danny Barbier press underneath Prentice and time after time it's going to be Joseph Nane dropping in as that third center back Augie Williams he needs to say hi he needs to occupy the two center backs for the Oakland Roots and just be a focal point for the battery to play out of Brilliant switch, Wolfgang Prentice brings it into a spell ball in, just out of reach. Might stay alive. Clever work from Wynn on the far side. He'll shepherd it out of play for a throw. Interesting, Cedeno was in the area. It's Charleston trying to evade some early press. Nice control. Kaza being brought into it. Dodson on the overlap. Derek Dodson. Forward turned right back. Augie Williams is moving in the box, but his cross to central went right towards Blanchett. And again, you see that on the top left corner of your screen. 2021, the first year for Oakland. First ever meeting between these sides. A long trip for them. They came in on Wednesday. Try and handle that difficulty. 40 hour drive if you do it. Crazy if you want to do that. <laughs> 2,400 miles between the locations. I think you, you look at Noah Zogato, the way that he's setting up into this match. You feel Hackshaw is actually playing in the center of the park, and Joseph Nani is that center center back of that back three. 
maybe a, a little bit of a tactical switch for Noel Delgado, something he's seen against this Charleston Battery side because Newville Hackshaw has been just so mm -hmm. good since coming into the Oakland Roots. Composure, quality, and just patience in the back line. So what's his relationship look like for Gomez? Players that probably haven't played together, mm -hmm. so it's something to keep an eye on now for the Oakland Roots. Definitely very interesting because it wasn't a substitute made for either player from the last 11. They decided to swap their positions in the match. Prentice, eyeing one forward. Rodriguez is going to be there to chase, but it's cleared away. Touch by Ikaza. Prentice was there on hand. He was fouled by Ikaza after the touch went away from him. So an interesting spot for a free kick. Potential for service from this wide position. If you like to play route one, what's a secondary action look like? What is that support system? Because it just gets caught a bit too casual, but mm -hmm. give credit to Prentice. He's been very good already, four minutes in, very active, getting himself in that final third. Neville Hackshaw making his way to the edge of the box, and they'll take a beat and will allow themselves to get some numbers forward. Both Cedeno and Diaz standing over it. They'll go short quickly, Diaz. Has Cedeno still with him if he wants it. He'll cut it back. Cedeno in some space. Low one across goal, begging for somebody, but goes past everyone. Took a deflection. He'll stay alive with the corner, but that was dangerous, Ricky. But again, if you're the Charleston batter, you need to be quicker to understand. There's two players on the ball. Barajas is exposed because he didn't. Need, he needs to make a decision. Does he go with the runner? Does he go with the ball? Diaz understands the situation perfectly. Draws out Ikaza, but then if you're an Oakland Roots player, you need to get on that back post. Clemenza just a bit late. No referee. one gets on the end of it. Referee changed the call. Will be a goal kick here. Archer playing it forward. Picks out Allen. Switch play quickly. It's win in the left back spot. Really interesting for Ben Pierman not having two players out in that set piece. It was far too easy mm -hmm. for the Oakland Roots to put the ball in a dangerous area. Likely a training ground exercise. They might have used that one in their arsenal already. They might be wise to it next time, but you can see Ben Pierman will likely be focusing and considering on avoiding that on second try. Long ball forward. Too strong. Beto Avila had a thumbs up, liked the idea of the ball, the execution a little strong. And Paul Blanchett will have the opportunity with the goal kick. Both these teams in great form though, the only two teams in the league, five unbeaten, two straight wins for Charleston. It was a one-all draw, a bit of a stalemate after two goals in the opening five minutes for Oakland last time out. Certainly an interesting contest, but split the points at home. It was down, nothing given. Reed was appealing, but Referee not hearing those appeals. Muse under a bit of pressure. Puts it out of play. We've already seen the Charleston Battery stepping high, inviting the Silicon Roots just to play into, into Rodriguez, Reed, and Cedeno, because that's something that Ben Perrin probably feels a bit confident that they're always going to win that initial action. And then it's Ikaza and Allen dropping down that double pivot that's so critical to the success for the battery. So if you're Nolto Gato, yes, you want to play direct. It's a good ball. But how do you play be between lines to draw them out? And when you draw them out, that's when you can play into the real state behind Archer and Palma. Barajas was trying to bring that one on the left wing, but the pass just off. Goes out for a throw. Roots considering their options. Hackshaw, as you mentioned, Ricky, in the midfield now. A bit of a switch for him. Referee playing advantage after the switch of play to Wolfgang Prentice. Barbier's pass is blocked. It'll still be a throw for the visitors. Markanich bringing it forward. Low one picks up the feet of Williams. Holds it up and slow thing, slows things down a bit. Allows Oakland to get back in their defensive structure. It's win. Two teams tactically, very interesting matchup. A back four, Charleston, back three, back five defensively for Oakland. Changes the buildup, changes the press when you have 
kind of radically different formations these two teams have. And that's one of the hardest things to do in football, just to break down a mid to low block, especially with a back five that the Oakland mm -hmm. Roots are quickly to get back into. So two things need to happen for the Charleston battery here today. One, the ball needs to move extremely quick, especially between lines. You need to be decisive in your passing and your dish, in your decision making. And two, the movement on the front line, pulling players out of position where someone can occupy the space that you vacated. So you're going to look at the relationship between Varajas, Williams, and Avila because they need to be spot on in terms of moving together. Angled ball out to the left side. Wynn is trying to chase it down. It's too strong. A couple long passes for Charleston not coming off in these early moments, but the attempts are there. side win nice pass the speed of Mark Anich Barajas patience has support with his left back he makes the run forward isn't picked out Charleston early spell of possession here in the last few moments Vikaza switches it from the center to the right Tries a clipped one forward. Barajas is there. It's headed away. Win stepping forward. Tries it. Shot was blocked. It doesn't sit up kindly. The shot, difficult one for the 17-year-old to pull off, and he puts it over the bar. We talked about second balls. How important can they be as this ball comes in? Because it picks up his head, tries to play off the shoulder of Emmer Clemenza, but you look at the lack of reaction between the Oak and Roots players. No one picks up that second ball. As Barajas gets the second bite of the apple, such a difficult technique. Over your right shoulder, the ball is dropping. The traffic is coming towards you. You have to have enough patience. His least preferred right foot, the special youngster for the Charleston Battery side. 17 years old, you know, seven assists, his best in the league. It's an incredibly impressive talent that, I mean, when you're at that age, continues to get better week in, week out. And that's something that we had a chance to speak with Ben Pierman, not before this game, but throughout the, the season, and said, look, I knew he was special when he came in. The challenge to me was how do I get the best out of them? Because so many times when young players come into a league, one miss, one mistake, one bad performance, it gets into their head. So mentally, yep. how do you keep them in? How do you keep them motivated? I think Ben Pierman has done a massive job, a fantastic job of just getting the best out of Barajas. Great muse. Great ball. Breaks the lines. Opportunity if he can carry it forward. Barajas has win. Oakland back quickly, low one, takes a deflection as it sit up kindly. Mark Hanish is there on hand, gets it to Williams. Can they try and just squirm this one through? It's scooped away, more fully dealt with and knocked out for a throw. And once again, Jack, you just see the lack of relationship between Neville Hackshaw and Gomez. Too many times players playing off of their shoulder, getting out of, drawn out of position just like this. Has a brilliant footwork, gets some space. Opportunity here at the edge of the box, a low one. Easy for Blanchett in the end, but some nice progression from Charleston. And it's a spot right in front of that back four of the Oakland Roots. So if you are Hackshaw and Gomez, one needs to stay home. As one goes, the other one stays right in front of that back four. Empty footwork from Ikaza. Mechanic straight at Paul Blanchett. You start to see Joseph Nani on the back end of it, telling his boys needs to be better in terms of their discipline and their compactness. Noah Delgado, head coach for the Roots team, making a long trip out east. South Carolina for this one. Hackshaw to the left. Prentice. Center back offering an overlap option. Reed. There's two white shirts with him. They appeal for offside, but he was in a good spot. Reed holding off his opponent. Dodson. Wins the throw. Thought about the quick option, but Avila. Slows that down. So Daniel had a shirt pull. He goes down a bit dramatically. Referee says nothing <laughs> given. You can certainly see the shirt being pulled on Sedanio, but referee Makes the most of it for sure. Not enough contact <laughs> for him there. Switch of play to the left side. Dawson gets ahead to it, nods it out. Emphasis clearly switching it to this left side for Prentice in the overlap from the left wing back spot. 
have a lot of success with the outside back play. It puts a lot of pressure on opposing outside backs if you're Dotson, if you're win on that far side for the battery, because you need to make a decision. Do you go out and yep. face Wolfgang Prentice or, or Memo Diaz, or do you stay compact with your back four? So in terms of decision making, it's a massive game. The two outside backs for the home side. Neil Hackshaw playing an interesting center midfield role. We'll talk about that more in a, in a moment. He'll be on this left-hand side. Might try and launch one into the box. His closest option is to his right. Prentice into the six-yard box. Tall header away. Dinked in. The bicycle from Rodriguez just off. They were appealing for offsides, but he was not off. Went for the dramatic, maybe because he thought he was off. And nearly, nearly an immense goal. Set pieces guy. are so important for a team that's on the road, but look at the top of your screen. John Rodriguez is extremely well to stay like for like with Leland Archer. And as this ball comes off of Gomez's foot, we've seen it with him in an Oakland Roots jersey to pull off the spectacular, the bike. Does so well to get his body underneath the ball, foot over the ball, but just so unlucky. Wrong side of the crossbar. John Rodriguez is feeling himself, yeah. and that's a player, much like Paul Blanchett, that we've seen the progression between our eyes in an Oakland Roots jersey. Kept in play by Barajas. Foot race, he loses out. That might have been his first touch of the match, and it was something as ambitious as that. You Not go back to that game in Detroit City, yeah. scores a goal out of nothing, picks yep. up his head, no one closes down the space, about 20, 25 yards. He's not need a second invitation to pull the trigger. I think if you are Noel Delgado, he's been such an X factor, the way that you play. You bring in Palais, you think he's gonna be the target man, you think he's gonna take the number nine position, but John Rodriguez had a very good watch out. Here's Williams in behind, Blanchett aligning and clears it away with the dribble. Dodson, not to harp too much on the bicycle kick, but even though he may have thought he was offside, might have been the best option for him, considering the situation as Avila carries it forward. Allen tries to scoop one out wide. Dodson's on hand, brings it in control. Low one, hooked away. Reed can carry it away. Nice, brilliant side tackle. The forward tracking back. Avila. Markanich. Low one, cleared away. Important clearance from Nane. Knocks it out of play, being tossed back in. Markanich gets past one, picks out Avila. Switch play again. Will Win be there on hand? I think just a bit of a miscommunication, breakdown in the attack. I think if you are Charleston Battery, there's going to have a lot of success with just movements. Pulling a player out of position, getting those half pockets right off the shoulder of Danny Barbier and Joseph Nana. What's the quality look like when you get into that 18 yard box? Really good play from Barbier with this pocket that he picks up, but again, unable to find Charleston Battery jersey. It goes wayward. Nelka Roots are getting pulled out of position a bit too easy defensively the first 17 minutes, probably for Noel Delgado's liking. Dodson chases that one down, gets his foot onto it. Williams on the last shoulder of the defender. Dodson for Williams at the back post. May have been an intervention. It was. It was a corner. Without that tackle, Williams is making it 10 on the year. We talked about it in the open, Jack. You give a player with the striker's instincts an attacking-minded outside back. He just gives you a different look going forward. Does extremely well to create that separation. And what a fantastic ball into the back post of Augie Williams. But give credit to Joseph Nane. Positions to perfection. Last-ditch defending effort. Just throws off the target man for the Charleston battery. He knocks it out for corner kick. will be the first of the match. Emilio Icaza. Head over to take. Loading up the six yard box. Blanchett, no room to even breathe. Referee making sure things are kept tight. Towards the back post. Dodds let it go over his head. Now for a goal kick. Digging into the injury report now. Heading into this matchup. Today's injury report presented by MUSC Health Sports Medicine. Buana still out, knee injury. All season will keep him out. Donaciano and, and Jai, a recent acquisition, also out for the Roots for their road trip. I think if you're the Oakland Roots, it's going to be very interesting when those two players come back. Because Donaciano, well, there was him and Napo and so, so essentially just have a different look and different feel for the Oakland Roots. And then for Buana, 
a player that can beat you 1v1 can create his own space, much like we've seen from, whether it is Augie Williams or Mikanich. Again, those players are probably chomping at the bit to get back into full health. Allen, he won the ball back, tried to play it to Williams. Williams in his press will commit the foul and relieve that pressure. Feels for that one after Allen was bumped a little bit when playing his pass forward. Williams, a similar bump. Foul going against the hosts. And talking to Ben Pierman before this one, they've got 14 points from losing positions this year more than anybody else in the league. They've got that kind of character to come back, but he was saying he'd appreciate not having to come back from those <laughs> trailing positions. He'd rather get points from winning ones. Header one, Kaz is on hand. Win. Barajas with a short option, he'll cut back. You can see, obviously, still a lot of matches to be played this year, but a, a nice, just thing to show on the board, you know. First in the league would be a massive thing for Charleston to, to look at. A team has been in fantastic form would be a testament to that. It's just validation for players. Indeed. If you're Ben Pierman, you come into this new season, so many new players. Have them buy into your philosophy, the culture that you want to build. And as you, like you just mentioned, Jack, you get into the first place of the Eastern Conference. Here's Avila. Slips trying to collect it. He'll stay on hand. He'll go to the ground. Referee goes a corner kick. Just from last year, they had 25 points, finished in 12th place. Pierman comes in after a great year with Memphis 901. Kind of just carries that over into his new club. They're in a great spot. He said that the goal was to have relevant football September, October. And they feel that they're in a great spot. Record shows it. That it will be very relevant here in South Carolina later on this fall. So Ikaz is going over to take this one. Outswinger this time. Second corner in a few minutes for Charleston, who have really ramped up the possession and the pressure in these last few moments. Over 60% possession for the hosts through these opening 20 minutes. Here we go, come on. She's whipped in. Attacked, header just off frame. It parted very nicely. Just yanking that one wide. Needs to be better for the Oakland Roots defensively. You can't let a player, the quality of Markanich, get himself right about seven yards out, rises up. So it's a terrific header, does everything right. Just yeah. so unlucky not to put it on target. Trying but that's not X and O's, Jack. That's just having the willingness to stay with your individual mark. Ronaldo Delgado needs to be better for the Roots. Tried flicking that one towards that left corner. Just didn't get enough purchase on it towards goal. Dodson. May have been fouled, the free will play advantage for sure. Barajas has Williams with him. Three options behind him. Win again, offering the option on the overlap. We'll go into Allen. Markanich turning up field. It's a foot in to Avila. Thought about a ball. Put in, knocked away. It's interesting seeing the fullbacks and their overlap win every time, sprinting forward. Dodds and a bit more conservative, not an every time sprinter. Just trying to create overloads when they can. I do, I do think just the tendencies of the players in front of them, Fidel Barajas likes to come into the interior mm -hmm. as well, likes to combine. Avila probably more an out and out winger that likes to go 1v1. So he's going to stay wide. You're going to see a lot of Derek Dodson, the underlapping runs that we've seen have been so successful for him. Gaza tried clipping one forward for Markanich, but that will roll out for a goal kick. That chance to take again. 40% of the action, though, been taking place in this final third. This possession is nearly 65% in favor of the host. If you're Oakland, you're on the road, you're allowing your opponents to have a lot of the ball. Is that something that Delgado will want to kind of switch around? 100%, I think. They need to get on the ball just a tiny bit more. You look at Gomez and Hackshaw. Doing a lot of the defensive side, but if you're Nolto Gato, you fancy them going forward. You need to get them. We haven't said Rodriguez besides that bicycle kick. Yeah. Trayvon Reed said Daniel have been widely quiet 23 minutes in. And those are the players that you want them confident. You want them on the ball, especially when trying to pick up points on the road in the OSL Championship. You say Cedeno's name. He gets involved in the action. <laughs> He's brought down there. Classic commentators. Chris there you go. But that one was direct from the goal kick. He received it at his feet and won the foul. 
And when things aren't going through, through the run of the game, set pieces are brilliant way to, to one, claw yourself back into it, but also get on the score sheet. Diaz trying one. Might sit kindly. Will indeed. Rodriguez got a foot to it, but it, Archer, excuse me, Allen in the middle of the park collects. Avila, space to drive into. Has Barajas with him. Three forwards connecting. Williams is in the box. Barajas pass behind him a bit. He gets towards it. Augie Williams tries a low one. It's going to be wide a goal, cleared away regardless. Reed controlling it. Charleston doing a great job winning these second balls after it's cleared away, recollecting possession. It all comes down to Ikaza and Allen, just the positioning, staying centrally, logging passing lanes, and also very tough in the challenge, just winning their 50-50 duels. Ikaza into Brajas, nice touching, gets it in. Williams, Dodson, sustained pressure for the hosts. Avila, impressed by Reed, keep it in play. Nice tracking back, it's hooked away. Rodriguez trying to get forward. And a foul called. That one going against Rodriguez. Now we can get this back underway. But Oakland have been stifled in these opening moments. Really it's difficult for anybody to get on the ball. He's having a very difficult time dealing with this pressure and just connecting passes simple and foremost. The shape isn't the best for the Oakland Roots at the moment, especially in the center of the park. Williams just can't quite get there. Nice first touch by Ikaza to escape the defender. He'll check it back, pick up Dodson. Got to be on the option four, but vital intervention by Prentice. Hackshaw receives the play the back. Here's Memo Diaz. Nane, low one, feet of Rodriguez, gives it back to where he got it. Barbier. Prentice, longest spell of possession, about the last 10 minutes for Oakland, they're just pinging it around a little bit, switching sides. Just get the confidence within the side, take the win out of the sails of this Charleston battery attacking unit, make them chase for a difference, move the ball from left to right, and as those gaps open up, that's when you start to see Javon Reed and said Daniel pop into those holes. Watch, Watch out. Yeah, Nane having uh, some work to do. Use a bit of physicality there. He actually will carry it. And they got some options that they can break. Avila's still down on the ground as Rodriguez switches play to the left side. Prentice has Reed with him. Gives it to him. Tries the shot, blocked away. Go out. Take a look at this one. What's your assessment of that, Ricky? Uh, there's a true extension of the left arm from Joseph Nani that catches Avila right in front of JC Griggs. Elects not to call it. I think there's a bit of frustration I mean, you from the see, player. You see can what see he's that saying. movement. He's saying the elbow. I do think there's an argument to be had. It's a clear, yes, you want to make yourself bigger, but once you get your hand in around the throat of your, of your opposition, that's oh, when yeah. you get into a tricky situation. And Ben Pierman definitely does not like it. JC! You can see just the emotion from Pierman as it's going to be a throw Barbier potentially to take. Oakland with it. Knocked out. They're appealing for a throw, but it'll stay with Oakland. Not the other way, rather. It'll still be Charleston, but forced to take it from a bit of a deeper position. A pretty quiet, all things considered, opening 27 minutes, but the match getting a bit contentious. These last few moments, refereeing decisions getting on both teams' minds. This game is asking for someone just to produce an individual brilliant yep. play. Test the goalkeeper, is trying to use Paul Blanchett. Wildly untested, very quiet. 30 minutes in for the goalkeepers between the sticks. Just one shot on frame so far. Here's Prentice into the 18. Cuts it back, tries when it's cleared away. King Prentice, though, continuing to advance. Barbier will let it go out for a throw. They tried a long throw from a similar spot. It led to the Rodriguez bicycle kick. They might try to run that back. There is Hackshaw. 
We got the towel as well, yeah. just like last time. Yep, he, he wants yes, to towel we do. it off. <laughs> Probably allowing his teammates to get forward as well while he takes the moment to make sure that he has optimal grip. Set piece off this throw in for Oakland if they want to toss it into the area. Referee with some discussions in the box though, wants to make sure that nothing boils over in the area. Launches it in. Headed away, foul committed. A lot of build up for that one, Ricky, and <laughs> doesn't come to much in the end. Allow Trey Muse, opportunity, and goal. Take this one forward. I was with Memphis 901 last year under Ben Pierman saying, Developing as fast as any goalkeeper that he's seen when he first saw him. He had questions about his ability, but by the end of the season, knew that he wanted him to be with him when he was moving to Charleston. Just the progression that the Hoosier alum has made. Wynn and Sedano under it. Wynn gets ahead to it. Markanich tries to flick it on. Sets up kindly. Avila gets something to it. Allen's header. It's going to bounce kindly. Williams has options with him. Augie Williams tries a low one, Blanchett gets to it, and it'll bounce kindly for him in the second one. He'll just pick it up. Out of nowhere, though, Williams trying to create something. Just so opportunistic. Once again, Jack, you just see there's the big gaping hole right in front of this back line of the Oakland Roots. Needs to be better and more compact. That was one key that Noel Delgado was quick to point out on our phone call. Defensively needs to be better in terms of their just positioning, but you look at your screen right yep. now. Space. So much space. Rahas trying to pick out Williams. Pass a little under hit. Blanchett can put a foot through it. We've seen Hackshaw and Nane flip around, and it's been unsuccessful so far. And nothing has obviously happened in terms of goals against, but I'm interested in your assessment, Ricky, of the midfield structure that we've seen from Oakland. I think if you're Noel Delgado, you have to switch it back. Plain and simple. Joseph Nane, we talked about him in the open, has a very good feel of when to stay central and just clog the passing lane. But when, him, when he drops back, that puts a lot of emphasis on whether it's Gomez or Neville Hackshaw to drop down. That's your left-sided center back making yeah. a run He's across the box, Danny Barbier. And that just tells you how discombobulated the back line for the Oakland Roots. Nagy Williams, he's a player that's going to make you pay, but straight at Paul Blanchett once again. This hydration break is brought to you by Recover 180 as the teams have a hydration break here in the first 45. But I mean, you, you pointed out right as we were talking about it, Ricky, just that space has been opening up in that pocket between the midfield and the defense has been huge. And something that Charleston hasn't really taken a massive advantage of yet, but it is something that I imagine will probably be a subject of discussion for both coaches during this break. And I think if you're Ben Pierman, first and foremost, you want Marquinhos just to stay in that pocket, to get the ball in the half turn and put a lot of pressure on the Oakland Roots back line. But for Nelson Gatto, again, it's simple. We talked about it, Jack. Just get on the ball a bit more and get confidence. Too many times you're sitting back into your defensive block, get Rodriguez and Reed and Cedeno confident, especially in the attacking phase of the game. The battery are back at Patriots Point on Saturday, August 26th, facing Memphis 901 FC tickets available now via SeatGeek, the battery's exclusive ticketing provider. Get your tickets now and save up to $10 per seat when you buy in advance. Head to tickets.charlestonbattery.com today. Battery Match is the perfect place to make lifelong memories with your friends and family. Your group of 10 or more can enjoy discounted tickets, exclusive on-field experiences, and private hospitality areas to catch the match. Visit charlestonbattery.com to learn, them, learn more and plan a memorable night at Patriots Point. After that hydration break, things breaking out. Ricky, I'm interested in hydration breaks. How much tactically can coaches get out in this really short time of both teams are trying to just get some water and get some energy back during the break? I think you're going to see a little bit of tweakness, especially defensively for the Oakland Roots. Maybe we keep talking about it, but it's, it's such a massive change for the Oakland Roots. Neville you know, Hackshall playing a line higher, so it needs to be a bit cleaner and a bit more decisive on the ball. And defensively, drop it, drop a bit mm -hmm. more. And for Ben Pierman, you just want to be a bit more cleaner when you get into that final third. So many times, he broke down, passes not finding their intended target, target, excuse me. And that's something that if you want to score goals, you need to be more decisive 
and having more efficiency in around that 18 yard box. Sedano back, picked up Gomez, attack Shaw, trying one forward. Pass only finds Dodson, Avila. Just gets in front of Rodriguez, clever from him. Draws the contact, gets fouled. Better Avila is on loan from the Dynamo. Interesting option for them out on the right wing. First 34, you know, we've talked a lot about some of the flaws of Oakland. And so in terms of who likes what we've seen so far more, I imagine Pierman might be edging that slightly for Charleston. 100%. And I think Noel Delgado would tell you that as well. I think just the spacing, the balance is a bit off for the Oakland Roots. You look at Nabil Hackshaw, yeah, he's right advanced. underneath Trayvon Reed. We've also seen Reed and Rodriguez switch. Reed going from left wing to center forward. Rodriguez a bit further wide. He's also dropping in bit deeper to offer an option at, at his feet. Pass a bit heavy. Avila's on hand. Williams in an offside position. Avila tries a low one, drags it wide of goal. Maybe a wasted opportunity for Charleston. Having a very difficult time getting out of gear one. This Oakland root side uncharacteristic from Paul Blanchett just trying to play into the path of jo Joseph Nanda. Avila not clean enough not to get it on target. He should do better from that distance, a player of that quality. them off a little bit. Yanks the shot wide. Possession swinging well in the favor of the hosts for today's matchup. Blanchett though, only tested with two shots on target, not really been forced into a massive diving save. He made nine last match. I don't think you want to be facing that many shots in any consistent manner. As Williams collects it here. He is a fantastic last resort, though, as we've seen all season, especially recently for Oakland. Tossed in quickly, Barajas beaten to it. Diaz on right wing. Cedeno is under it, trying to keep it in play. Clever touch, knocks it off of Allen. Referee's gonna want to take a throw in a bit deeper. We've seen a few moments like that, the referee kind of just putting some pauses into the match, hasn't gotten a massive flow going yet. Nane. Mikaze gets there first, Avila. Williams is in acres of space if he get his head up in time. Barajas with it. Fidel Barajas got it caught under his feet and Blanchet puts a foot through it, clears it forward, Rodriguez flicking it on. But those are situations that if you're the Charleston battery, you need to take advantage of. Vulnerable in the back for the Oakland Roots. The movement on the front line, Anki Williams does very well to draw out Danny Barbier. If you play a bit cleaner into the path of Fidel Barajas, he can take a good first touch out of his body. First touch lets him down, and that gives time and space for the Oakland Roots to drop back and do their defensive duties. You need to be ruthless if you're the Charleston battery. Exactly what I'm talking about. Avila, head full of steam. You see the run from Aki Williams. That brings in Clemenza. But as his ball is behind him, that gives Memo Diaz the real estate to drop down. Does it put it on his preferred left foot? Needs to be better for the Charleston battery. And they given more space than they have. We've given him a good amount of space, but they just haven't been able to take advantage of it. Neither team too sharp in these opening moments. Yeah, both in good form, but. Difficult against each other. Blanchett gets us back underway. Allen. Barajas. Foul drawn. That's Avila, excuse me. They flipped wings here. Ricky, what kind of goes into that decision making if you want to try and see if your wingers should flip sides? What is the intention if you want to try and put yourself in the feet of Pyramid? If this is more of a, as you see, Barajas receive it at his feet, if it's something they're going to try for a, an extended period of time in this first half. Well, I think Ben Pyramid sees something that maybe if Barajas is going to have more success on this side or vice versa, Avila on that far side, more real estate to operate in, and also just getting numbers. And tries a low one. Will it bounce kindly for Charleston? It's cleared away, not fully dealt with. Dodson, space, clips it up. Nane heads it away, trying to get to it. Goes down, appeals, but nothing will be given. Archer 
from center back. Ranges forward, gets to Barajas. Archer, low one. Intercepted and cleared away. And I also think for the Charleston battery side, plays to the favor of Fidel Barajas to play on this right-hand side. We talked about how lethal of a left foot he yep. is, whether it's getting goals, whether it's getting assists, two goals, seven assists on the year. So by tendency, he's going to cut in. And then you're going to see the movement of Augie Williams come a bit more decisive, cutting lines, darting runs from inside out. So well, that's something if you're the Charleston battery, how do you get the ball on this near side to play centrally? Foul off the ball, I believe it might have been Ikaza, who's dinged for this one. Kind of just a, a cagey first 39. Just like that, Ricky. Almost done with this first half. And I mean, we've got the, the Johnny Rodriguez bicycle kick that I don't know if you, what you would call that as a good chance, but we'll take another look at this one as a foul. Rikaza off the ball. You know, with the left side of your screen just kind of bumps into him a little bit. A bit light. Rodriguez, though, brought down. Prentice, Hackshaw, is pressed heavily. Trying to stay with it. Clips it forward. Archer will knock it out. Barbier. Taking some time with this throw on the near side. Barbier, Hackshaw, moves it to the right side. Boy Diaz. Sedania moving infield. Reed into the feet of Hackshaw. Tries one from distance, forces the first save of the match from Trey Muse. Out of nothing, Oakland shot on target. Probably the best passage of play that we've seen from the Oakland Roots. You start on this near side to switch to point of attack. And as the danger just waits for this run from Memo Diaz, that opens up real estate. Essentially, ball around the corner, and a terrific strike from Hackshaw. Left foot, has eyes for that top of corner. Even better save from Trey Muse. Going short, we'll get it back into play quickly. Cedeno, he'll get there first. Low one across goal. Will it squirm free? It was in front of the goal mouth. Still alive, it's Memo Diaz, his options. Angled ball in, header across goal. Is it bouncing? Kindly might have been an own goal. Regardless, Oakland opening the scoring late, late in the first half. Out of nothing, a shot on target from Hackshaw gets in the corner kick. They keep it alive. Memo Diaz's ball in. And the Roots take a 1 0 lead over the battery. I was about to mention there needs to be more decisive movement in around that 18 yard box. Top of your screen, Danny Barbier does extremely well just to check his run. That little hesitation plays off the shoulder of Dawson and puts the outside back of the Charleston battery in a very tricky situation. Tries to put it across into the path of Sedano. Wrong side of Dawson, just so unlucky. Yeah. But the Oakland Roots, especially on the road, will take it. They get their goal against the run of play for sure in the first half. 1-0, Oaken Roots. It's given to Barbier tentatively, but looked like Dodson had a massive roll in that one off of his head. But if you're Barbier, it was a nice run, and when you headed across goal like that, incredibly hard to defend in a dangerous situation they generated. And you know, we talked about not a perfect first 45 from Oakland by any stretch, had some flaws to it, but you hold the lead in the last moments of the first half. Don't need to be perfect, especially when you're on the road, points matter being clinical in around your 18-yard box, but it's all about the movement of one, Danny Barbier, but also the ball from Memo Diaz, take nothing away from it. The vision and the quality and the technical ability to pull it off, and then you get rewarded for the right idea from Danny Barbier. Tries to net it, head it back across into the runs, but straight into the head of Derek Dawson, just so unlucky. But the Oakland Roots, own goal or not, Danny Barbier's goal or not, they'll take it. Foul committed. Allen overrunning that one. I mean, taking a look at this one. Obviously, it's goal regardless. It just matters in the stat books who it might be given to. You'll see it just kind of go backwards, hit Dodson's head. Definitely seems like that one should be given as an own goal. Unfortunate for him, scored the winner last match and was just there tracking the run. Those are the margins of USL Championship, though. Charleston Battery having opportunity after opportunity. Yep. 
Takes one for the Oka Roots, and now they're sitting in the lead right before halftime. As you get deeper into the season, this, this 2023 campaign, Margin Barrett, who's going to be more clinical in critical moments, especially defensively, 18 yard box, offensively, you're in your 18 yard box. And so far, it's been the Oak and Roots. Dodson clattered as he went for that header. Referee discussion with Prentice. It's a free kick for Charleston. They would love a response at home in this first half. They've had good moments, they've had lion's share of the ball. Wynn tosses it back in. Allen, nearing the 45th minute. Out right side, Dodson. Opponent goes down, it'll be a throw in. Prentice is enough to hold him off. First minute last time out against Detroit. We'll swap throw in takers after a bit of a thought there. Hackshaw will launch it forward. Feeling for handball, nothing's given though. It goes out, knocked last off of Dodson. Bit of frustration developing for the battery. But Oakland took a lead in the first minute. Really early on, Rodriguez at the goal. They conceded off a corner in the fifth minute. And no more goals than that one it was a one all draw. Reed gets a foot to it, so dueling for it. Attempted clearances, it's not fully gone. Squirms positively for Oakland with three minutes of added time. The referee has just indicated there will be three minutes Next time of is brought to you by MUSC Health, Health Sports Medicine as it falls for Reed. Option the left side. Prentice. It's going to go towards Muse. Routine for him, we'll collect it. Williams trying this first control with his chest. Couldn't bring it in with the second. Bounces kindly, though. He'll hold the ball up. Support. Gomez, though, takes it away. Nane. Space to carry it. To the right, Cedeno. Knocked out. If you're Oakland in these last few moments, how much are you throwing forward? Obviously, you have this 1 0 lead, but doubling it, twice as good. I don't think you just feel the confidence growing for the Silicon Root side. As you see the ball hit the back of the net, getting on the ball a bit more, connecting more passes. Much to your question, Jack, I think if the, the opportunity is there, you take it. But if you're Noel Degato, you have to be very happy with probably not your best performance in terms of just pure soccer playing. Yeah. 47 minutes, but you get the lead, especially in a very difficult time across country, also environment. No one's got it needs to be very pleased with just grinding out the results so far for the Oakland Roots. A grind to the first 46 and a half minutes. We're halfway through this first half stoppage time. Clipped back in, headed away by Hackshaw. Did Reed keep it in play? He did. Nice opportunity. He's got Rodriguez, Cedeno on the right side. His number's back for Charleston. Reed into the box, cuts it back. Still with him, shot right in the chest of Muse. Powerful. Just a little bit of a glimpse of what Trayvon Reed can bring. Watch out. We've seen a bit of chippiness develop at the edge of the box. Player's gone down. You saw it as Rodriguez was going after Muse. He was trying to bring it forward, and then it was Leland Archer came over and let him know he wasn't a fan of it. Let's look at the shot again. Nice bit of individual play from Reed. This gives you something different, 1v1. Head full of steam downhill, and there's on the back end of it. John Rodriguez just tries to catch out at transition moments, and it's Palma coming to the rescue. Just bumping, Palma makes the most of it, goes down, tries to get John Rodriguez into the cloak of JC Griggs. Yellow card produced for Johnny Rodriguez. Center forward for Oakland being booked. See if it's mutual or if there's going to be. Getting 
the aftermath of that. So maybe a little bit more than our additional three added on at the end of this first half. Some extracurriculars. Just no need for Johnny Rodriguez to get involved with Palma. He's baiting him. First tries to catch a transition moment of Trey Muse. That's what ignites the whole thing. So now on a yellow card right before half time, what does his discipline look like for John Rodriguez, especially in the second half? Out from the back. Williams controls it though. I think he's playing advantage. Back for Ikaza. Let's pass out wide. Knocked away. It'll fall kindly for Blanchett. Might be one of the last actions of our first 45 minutes. And indeed it will be. An interesting first half out of nothing. The Oakland Roots, beneficiaries of an own goal. They take a 1-0 lead. Ricky, your takeaways from that first 45. I think first and foremost, if you're Ben Pierman, needs to be better, especially in that final third. Too many times it breaks down when you get in around that 18-yard box ball, not finding their intended target. It's just begging for someone to produce an individual brilliance. But for the Oakland Roots, you grew into that first half, getting on the ball a bit more, but defensively needs to be more compact. And if you can get an opportunity to get a second goal, it's going to be massive to grab all three points on the road. Danny Barbier was on hand, may have been given to him. He won't care who touched it in the end. A 1-0 lead for the Roots on the road, their first ever time in Mount Pleasant, South Carolina. Fascinating first 45, some halftime content to come for you here after a brilliant first 45. Oakland Roots 1, Charleston Battery nil. as we jump into halftime on ESPN+. There's a brand new morning Rising clear and sweet and free There's a new day No sleepy headed and moving in reverse kind of state. We're home to barrier breaking humans who took seven billion dollars and invested it in microchips, potato chips, nope, education. This investment it builds jobs and more jobs where people create things like flying, mm, not that. Who does all this? Forward thinking pilgrims of change like you. South Carolina. Now that's smart. There's a brand new morning Rising clear and sweet and free There's a new day No sleepy headed and moving in reverse kind of state. We're home to barrier breaking humans who took seven billion dollars and invested it in microchips, potato chips, nope, education. This investment it builds jobs and more jobs where people create things like flying, mm, not that. Who does all this? Forward thinking pilgrims of change like you. South Carolina. Now that's smart. Halftime between Charleston and the Oakland Roots. A good first 45 minutes in the books. We can now look ahead what comes next for these two teams in their next five games. First off for the hosts, they're hosting today's match, Ricky, but they hit the road an interesting next five. And not only in USL Championship, Jack, but leagues around the world, it's so important to pick up points on the road. And you're, if you're Ben Pierman, this is a meaty part of your schedule. You're going to Lynn Family Stadium. You're going to Detroit City, across country to Orange County. You, then you go to the lab, which is New Mexico United. So again, not easy places to go, but you welcome Memphis 9 one So for Ben Pierman, how do you pick up points? That's going to be the question for Charleston Battery. Next home match. They have a bit of a wait three between it, but it's against Memphis 901 FC on August 26, 7.30 p.m. ESPN Plus, the broadcast for that. As always, an interesting match to come up at home for them. On the flip side for the visitors, Oakland, they'll head back home next weekend. We'll see what's up for them. I'm coming. And again, three on the road for the Oakland Roots at New Mexico at Lynn Family Stadium. And then you go to Las Vegas. And we talked about the Las Vegas game. That was very tricky for Noel Delgado. But then you welcome the switchbacks and Sacramento Republic. So again, for Noel Delgado, you need to pick up points at home. And when you go on the road at these tough places, how do you get the first 10, 15 minutes to weather that storm? That's what's coming up for these two teams. More halftime content to come. It's Charleston Battery and Oakland Roots back in a moment on ESPN+. Plus.
Are you ready? Ready for more of the game you love. Ready for more players and more teams. Ready for more stadiums, for more fans in more cities. This is a different league. The USL Super League. Built for the future of women's soccer. Bridging the journey from youth to pro, connected to the global game, and bringing it all closer to home. Are you ready? We all have goals. But let's be honest. Most of us aren't going to be professional athletes. But if your goal is to finish your degree, we can help. Come to a university that puts your goals first. Bellevue University, your partner in finishing goals. Halftime in Mount Pleasant between Charleston and Oakland. A fascinating week last week in USL Championship. We can dig in to the goal and save the week from last week. And then the greener pastures of the Netherlands followed. That was the next club, yeah. Cross comes in from the right. It's a diving header and it's in. Russell Cicerone, a gorgeous goal. His 12th on the season. And for me, it's all about the, the cross into the box. It's absolutely on the money in the perfect spot. And that man's on fire this season. He is not missing a header from six yards out. Ridiculous and it again Zuhir and Hernandez. It's Hernandez, a deflection and another big time save from Joe Rice. That ball changed directions on its way to the keeper, and Rice was able to punch that one away. A brilliant goal and a brilliant save. We can look at the general team of the week now. An interesting one headlined Tal Tani Alawashe. And he's scoring goals for fun, but Jack, when it comes to the team of the week, I always I always argue this. I think they need to be an Eastern team of the week and a Western team of the sure. week. There's just so much talent in the USL Championship. You look at Derek Dotson, he's been massive since going back to that right back position for Ben Pierman. We talk about Augie Williams, Russell Cicerone, Oluwashi, players that are scoring goals for fun. And that's what you want to see players express themselves in that final third and well-deserved for every single one of these players for the Team of the Week in Week 21. That was your Team of the Week. Some news and notes from around the league. Again, confirmation, Tani Oluwashi, Player of the Week. The Loyal, they're continuing to roll into a three-game win streak. And Nate Miller's pressing all the right buttons out in San Diego, getting that reaction after the locker room because they did take a little bit of a dip, but the reaction has been spectacular. The style of play that the San Diego would like to do three games on the bounce and they have four consecutive home games so watch out for the loyal and then usl on espn mm -hmm. two switchbacks fc tulsa be there be there indeed 9 p.m august 9th now looking at the power rankings on top of it a team in today's match and again obviously the charleston battery doing ex Wizard under Ben Pierman since he came into the fold. San Diego Loyal, we talked about how good they've been as of late, but Tampa Bay Rowdy's new life under Nikki Law. 
take down their opening game 3-0. Orange County, different look for Orange County. We talk about all these teams that have started maybe a bit shaky, but really getting their rhythm as the 2023 season progresses. And these are your top 10 best teams at the moment. Oakland Roots in eighth there. And tonight's out-of-town scores are brought to you by the Charleston Airport. Some interesting ones to come up. And you're looking at that one tomorrow, in, especially in this Eastern Conference. Pittsburgh Riverhounds welcoming Tampa Bay Rowdies. Phoenix Rising going to San Antonio. San Diego welcoming Orange County. All so many games. FC Tulsa welcoming Lou City. And then obviously the one, the switchbacks in the Birmingham Legion. So really good set of games in USL Championship over this weekend. Some really nice ones to come up in the future. One last break before we get you first half highlights and stats. And the second half between Charleston and Oakland on ESPN+. Plus. The estimated haul time is now 96 minutes. Sorry, are you still there? Yes. Okay, please hold. Turn up the heat. Charleston is located in the low country of South Carolina. The history here, it runs deep and you can't imagine being any place else. This place is magical. Tonight's match is brought to you by Sphinx. Sphinx, making life easier in SC. An interesting first 45 minutes. Let's dig into the highlights, get you caught up with what happened early on. It was a lot of Charleston, a lot of things heading their way positively. We'll look at some early action from Oakland, who actually started the match in the first five minutes really quite positively. And we talked about how special set pieces can be, especially when you're on the road. As Daniel comes around the corner, it's a brilliant ball. And yes, it takes a little bit of deflection from when there's no corner kick called. Yeah. And it was really interesting, to Jack, because Noel Delgado, Ben Pyramid, it was so cagey between the two sides. And this is probably a brilliant <laughs> opportunity from John Rodriguez. Pull something out of nothing and just gets denied by the crossbar. But it's a movement to keep himself yep. on line off the shoulder of Leland Archer. Not offside at all. But just so unlucky, no goal. We'll see Charleston, who grew into it. They had a few moments go against him, as you saw in those first 15. Derek Dodson was very involved in the first half. That one just off on Williams. And he just gives you a different look going forward. It's a brilliant idea just to bend it into the path of Aki Williams. But give credit to Joseph Nani. And this is an interesting one off of a set piece. Header just wide. Mark Hanich can't quite get it right on goal. And there were, again, opportunities for Charleston that they're not kicking themselves about because they weren't able to put those on frame weren't able to try and convert in the best possible way. Just haven't been clean enough when they get in this situation just like this. But we start to see Fidel Barajas come into this right-hand side. Will that change a little bit of opportunities for the Charleston battery side? But Aki Williams, he's just so opportunistic. He needs a yard to get a shot off. Doesn't get as cleanly as he would like. But once again, you talk about the spacing, and that was a big issue for the Oak Roots, especially centrally. The relationship between Hackshaw and Gomez wasn't the best yep. defensively. And Aki Williams comes into the central position, but straight at Paul Blanchett. Talked about Hackshaw, he'll actually have an opportunity to get to the corner kick set up. And this is the big moment of the first half. Headed across goal by Barbier, hits the head of Derek Dodson. It's now given as an own goal against the right back for the battery. Concedes that one, down 1-0. Doesn't need to be the prettiest, but needs to be effective for the Oak Roots. Talk about quality of the pass from Memo Diaz. 
over the back all, all over the back line. And then it's Nini Barbier having the right idea. Yep. Just gets a little bit fortunate, yes, but the Oakland Roots will take it. And your stats here brought to you by Heineken. Shots, possession, both favoring the hosts. 7-3 to three in that department. 58-42%. to 42%. They've just been dominating in that area, but the goal's obviously swinging the way of the Roots. Just need to be a bit more cleaner for the home side, especially keep talking about it in that final third. Ask questions of Paul Blanchett, widely untested, and you want to put him on his heels. You want to get Clemenza, Nani, and Barbier in very tricky situations. So you're going to you start to see a little bit more of overload in wide areas for the Charleston Battery. What I imagine for Ben Pierman, Allen, Ikaza, Marcanis, get on the ball a bit more. That relationship to bring players out and penetrate in behind the back line of the Oakland Roots. It's going to be massive for the Charleston Battery to get their opening goal. They're a team that thrives in a comeback situation. 14 points in comeback spots. Nobody has more in the league. Last weekend, they were down 1-0. They made three subs with 20 minutes to go. They changed things. Tristan Traeger with the equalizer. Derek Dodson scored the winner in the 91st minute. Heading from left to right, trying to maintain their lead and continue their unbeaten streak going. Are the Oakland Roots up one goal to nil as the visitors in their yellow and black jerseys are going to be heading from right to left. Speaking of Tristan Traeger, he came on at halftime for the battery on for Fidel Barajas. Initially one at halftime to make. Traeger getting the opportunity. Full 45, second half. Great question for Ben Pearman. Now for Tristan Traeger, excuse me, how quickly can he get in a rhythm? How quickly can he get confident? Can he because he can be a game changer for the Charleston battery side be players 1v1 and also the quality to get on the end of things. So watch out for him on this near side as an attacking player. Win trying it to Williams. It's sliced away. Nane, they're persistent with this. Nane in the in the center back role. Hackshaw in the midfield. They swapped in that first half. Rodriguez tried to flick one to Cedeno. Pass didn't quite come off. But again, Traeger last time out stretched Birmingham going forward as an option with his speed, his verticality. I want to have a similar storyline in this one. Again, Pierman saying that a lot of it's down to just believe, the excellent staff that they have around the club, able to prepare players, substitutions able to have an impact. That's why they're able to come from behind on such a frequent basis. Had three stoppage time winners this season. That's six points that Pierman points to is just one moment, almost the last kick of the game. You're swinging it in your favor. Blanchett hooks it forward. An awkward header backward. It's going to fall back for Muse. Palma. If you're Oakland, what kind of defensive structure do you think you're employing as a switch of play? Trying to pick out Avila. We'll get to that back in a moment. Avila has an option at support. It's Markanich. Gets into the box. Still with it. A low one across. Is it cleared away? It is. Vital intervention. Not fully dealt with. Ikaza from distance. Low. It's going to bounce wide. Early opportunity for Charleston. Can't quite get a shot from a great spot. But Williams on hand, as always. And these are the pocket, the space that you want Mark Hanish to pick up. He's just so good at 1v1. He's so clever with the ball at his feet. Ropes it into a traffic area, but give credit to Emre Clement. A last ditch defending effort. Position to perfection. Augie Williams is right there at the doorstep, but Joseph Nani beats him. I, th I do think if you're the Charleston Battery, that relationship between Augie Williams and Mark Hanish needs to be a bit better because we didn't see that connection so much in that first half. Augie Williams, he's going to stay high. He's going to stretch the opposition. So the gap between lines for Mark Hanish needs to get a bit more on the ball and make things happen for the home side. Double back to what I was going to ask you, Ricky, just the defense structure for, for Oakland. When packing it in, being a bit more defensive, trying to get the options dropped because with Hackshaw in his role, there's been space opened up. When do you think, if you're at Delgado in Oakland, are you trying to make things a bit more conservative? I would think probably about the 70th minute mark, if, if it's still 1-0. Sure. Because you, if you know anything about Nel Delgado, he wants to be expansive. He wants uh -huh. to play attacking football, right? With the talent that he has at his disposal, you look at... So Daniel, Trayvon Reed, John Rodriguez, we've seen what Memo Diaz can bring to the field. Those players can produce something out of nothing. The drop of a hat changed the complexity of a game. 
So he wants him to be a bit more compact, but also if he gets a bit deeper into the second half, you're, you're going to start to see him make some timely substitutions. On the underlap, whipped in. Reed trying to get a foot to it. Dodson will have to get in, cut across his opponent, and draw the foul. But always having that balance for the Oak Roots. Yes, you want to be great overloads on wide areas, but you don't want to leave yourself vulnerable going back the other way. And that's, I think, is something that for the Charleston Battery, if you can catch him in transition moments, there's going to be a lot of success to be had. Just joining us, one sub at halftime for Charleston after a first half own goal from Derek Dodson has them down one goal to nil. Tristan Traeger on. You can see the records, a pair of teams in great spots. Second in the East, a chance to go first with a win. Currently losing though to a third placed Oakland side. Drew last time with Detroit City, that ended a three match win streak. They're unbeaten in five. Again, Jack Edwards, Ricky Lopez, Espin. Delighted to be with you through a, an interesting first 50 minutes of this one. Kaza. See Dodson very advanced on the right side. Receiving at his feet. Playing it in field. Avila. Williams. A lot of space for a win. Options in the box. First time on frame just wide. Brilliant opportunity for Traeger. It was a vital intervention from Nane. Knocks it wide. You want to say compact to go out round the corner. Look at this run from Traeger. He pulls out Memo Diaz, and as he does that, De Declan Wynn understands it's going to be real estate to get myself in an attacking phase of the game. It's a great entry ball into Tristan Tager. Even better for such, but once again, Joseph Nane comes to answer every single question that's of him. Last ditch defending effort, but again, that's something that if you're Ben Beerman, you want that fluidity, you want that understanding when you get in around that 18-yard box. Best chance of the match for Charleston. Traeger trying to make it two matches in two with an equalizer. This one whipped in from the corner. Header wide of goal. It was Derek Dodson who might have gotten highest for that, trying to avenge the goal that he conceded on the other end. But I mentioned that in the first half, Jack. Again, we talk about movement on the front line. It doesn't need to be 10 to 15 yards. It just needs to be a little bit of a change of an angle. Christian Traeger gets on the wrong side of Memo Diaz so that he needs to have emergency defense. He needs to get stay compact and if you come around the corner you take a look at what happened here for johnny rodriguez yeah took a bit of a bump in the air rodriguez gonna get some treatment after that one was dealt with a little slow to get up It'll be a, a hard miss for them yeah, again traeger i mean he came on in the 70th minute last match equalized in the 82nd his second goal of the year got two and four Talking to Pierman, saying that they've got a lot of matches coming up in the next few days. There are going to be a lot of minutes for him to play. He wasn't going to play from minute one, but obviously with the second half, you know. We talk about it in basketball a lot. You know, it doesn't matter if you start the game, it matters if you finish the game. And he's going to be offered the opportunity. As you can see him just on the right side of your screen, Traeger. Trying to finish this one out. And a very, very good opportunity. moving around a little bit there. The battery have a brand new look on and off the field this year thanks to Hummel, the club's official jersey provider. Check out the full line of new battery gear including the custom 2023 primary, secondary, and alternative kits by visiting shop.charlestonbattery.com. Bit of a pause after the opening few minutes as Rodriguez see him running along near touchline, trying to get himself back into the match. If he's able to maintain full fitness, he'll obviously be a massive role in this one as Blanchet gets his back underway. See him trot back out on the field. Hackshaw gets his head to it. Fighting for it. One by Reed. He can drive at Dodson. There's three yellow jerseys around him. He's edged off of it. Ikaza, low one. Markanich. Can he hold off as a defender? He can. Allen, he's trying one. Sick Heinley, Traeger has it. Pass for win though, just too heavy. Traeger again getting in a good spot. Declan Wynn flying up and on the left hand side. Poor pass. Traeger not able to bring him into it. 23 year old 
forward for the side. It's Daniel, nice bit of footwork. Trying to flip it back though. Seeds it. Markanich. He'll leave it. It's win. Williams. Markanich has it taken off of him. Poke centrally, it's Archer. Just see how compact the Oakland Roots are defensively. Watch out. Wow, that's dangerous. Muse is there on hand. He made to work a little bit for that one. Just a completely unorthodox situation. Trey Muse was alert and quick enough to get there. Almost a brilliant finish from Archer on his own goal. Going back to that point, it's been a lot better for the Oakland Roots defensively. Just the structure from back to front. 11 players in their defensive half at the moment, making life extremely frustrated. Frustrating for this Charleston battery side. Avila receives at his feet. Dodson on the overlap pass is a little behind him. He'll collect it. Pointing forward is Markanich. He was running in that channel. It'll be clipped in for him. Nice tackle by Reed tracking back. It's a foot in. Patrick just puts a foot through it. Clears it out. Dodson quickly gets his back going. Fire to the feet of Avila. Gaza. It's Allen. From right to left. It's Wynn. Left back. Plays it to Rodriguez. A lot of work to do. He'll stay with it. Johnny Rodriguez. It's two versus five. And I'll bring it in. Memo Diaz. Cedeno. It's really good work there from Johnny Rodriguez. We talked about Charleston Battery having a lot of the ball in this, especially in the second half. So what does it look like going back the other way? You need to be a focal point. Great Reed run. In for Rodriguez. His shot saved by Muse and recollects it. The flag stayed down. There was appeals for it. I think Rodriguez is putting that one past Muse. That one's counting. Don't want to get a bit complacent. Yes, a lot of the ball. The Charleston battery. Don't want to fall asleep in the back. John Rodriguez has been massive the last two instances for the Oakland Roots. We talked about him being a lone striker, so he has to take a lot of the responsibility just to hold up the play and relieve some of the pressure that they've been under. He's going to want that finish back, though. A bit too casual. Just pokes at it with mm -hmm. the right foot. You open up your hips and calmly slot into that near post with your left foot. Probably a better angle. Traeger loses out to Diaz. Center play on this right hand side. Gomez checks it back. Clemenza. Shifting out of the left side. Reed. Slide tackle. How one might say in play. Kind roll. Williams. His teammates around him. Traeger was at the back post. Nane got a foot in there and will clear it away. How good has Joseph Nane been? In the back for the Oakland Roots. In terms of his just his positioning. Time and time again. Last ditch defending effort. Nice turn. Trying to pass. Markanich scoops it. Picks out win. Whipped in, headed away. It's a high bounce. Hackshaw gets ahead to it, nods it away. Slip by Dodson, and Reed can capitalize. Rodriguez is with him. Zidane a bit deeper on the left-hand side. Two players, though, overwhelm him. Joseph Nani at 36. He's a freshman in Old Dominion in 2006. The foul's called. Pass is put away. Reed will be booked for his challenge there. Nane. 36, Cameroonian, immense experience in Kazakhstan, across America as well, and 
showcase that experience, being able to just drop into the center of defense, making it look like he does it all his own entire life. What do you sign for the Oakland Roots? A lot of eyebrows raised. If you're Trayvon Reed, there's just no need to go into this challenge. You pick up a silly yellow card right to the backside of Derek Dotson. When the Oakland Roots announced the signing of Joseph Nani, a lot of eyebrows raised because it just gave you a different look. It's so much security, so much confidence, so much patience and composure wherever he plays on the field and talked about him playing primarily centrally mm -hmm. and being quote unquote that destroyer that connects the back to the front from side to side but also having just the ability to have a calming presence in the locker room and say look guys we stay the right way being at voice between no togato into these players and he's been massive for the success of the oakland roots williams trying to turn his defender unable to 17th professional season his time in college Archer under a bit of pressure from Rodriguez, deals with it. Kicked off of Reed. We had in the host's way. 15 minutes into the second half. It is Charleston who need to find a way back into it. Switch of play. Diaz jumps in. Vital intervention. Cedeno. Options on the break. Cedeno. Shot takes a deflection, goes wide a goal. But again, Oakland continue to be dangerous trying to double that lead. It's a big no-no for Ikaza. Just tries to play a square ball yeah. in his defensive half. But this run from Memo Diaz, I think he needs to get rewarded for this. So Daniel does very well to draw out Palma. He hit a little reverse pass now to the right-hand side. It's 1v1 for Memo Diaz. A bit selfish. So Daniel goes out for a corner kick. So Daniel will go over to take it. He saw the whites of the keeper's eyes and decided to pull the trigger. A little quickly. Whipped in. Headed away, Traeger got ahead to it. Williams is under it. Claiming for handball would have been certainly very harsh. Outside of the boot pass, Allen making a run. She defensive midfielder, trying to attack forward. His pass picks out Traeger. Nice progression up this left side. Whips it in. Vila trying to get there, will get there. Humphrey says nothing given, no foul. Vila Hackshaw can carry it forward. Rodriguez in the last line of defense. Opening it up in a lot of ways. Reed trying to work on his defenders. Foul committed. He was just booked. Free and I was talking to him, but likely nothing more. Look at this one again. Looks like a correct no call for you, Ricky. Yeah, I think he just tries to make the most of it. Avila, Danny Barbier, looks like him discuss after on the back end of it. Oakland making a substitution. Ryan Kerr ready to come on for Trayvon Reed. I think very good timing for Noah Delgado on that sub. He commits the foul just after getting the yellow card. Reed, a great 60 minute performance from him, but very short leash now with the yellow card. That good manage management from Noel Zagato. A bit frustrated. Trayvon Reed doesn't get his secondary dribble out of his feet. Commits a second foul right after picking up a yellow card. So you want to say keep 11 players on the field. Now, if you're Ryan Hur, how quickly can you adapt to yep. the game tempo? 22 years of age. In his fourth appearance off the bench for her. Side win, eyeing one forward into the channel for Traeger. He'll get there first. Coming across, Clemente was there, staying with Traeger, goes to the low option. Markanich drags it just wide. What an opportunity again for Charleston. Again, though, they cannot convert. See so the impact that Traeger has brought in since coming off the field does very well just not to give up on this play. But as he cuts his ball back, if you're Markanich, you have to hit this right foot. It comes across your body as you elect to hit it with your left foot. It closes down your angle. Open up your hips. Right foot far post. It's 1-1. Yeah. 
question mark in terms of the, the decision making for a player that quality. He knows better. He knows he at least should be hitting the target. But what an opportunity that goes begging for the Charleston battery. Got seven goals on the year. He can put them in the back of the net. And he's been in and around their best opportunities in this second half. As Mikaza holds off the defender on multiple bounces and wins the free kick. Her committing the foul. Yeah, it just seemed like for Markanic, just was begging to move it out of the right foot. And you just have a, many more options. Difficult though for him to try and generate the power with his left foot kind of stuck under his, his body. As Wynn plays it to Allen. Hackshaw pressing high. Oakland again still trying to win the ball high up the pitch, make things uncomfortable for Charleston as Muse puts one high into the South Carolina sky. Hackshaw gets ahead to it. Allen pokes it down. Offsides might have been given. Appealing for any advantage to be played, but it'll be offsides after the attempted header by, I believe, Rodriguez was. I do think, once again, if you're Charleston batter, you have to feel hard done by it. And man, just yeah. pull up full force or off the shoulder of Gomez. A lot of runners asking questions, testing the shape of this back line of the Oaken Roots. Traeger trying to pick out wins, pass not quite on. Diaz, relentless defending, picks out her. It's brought down, foul given. Derek Dodson called for it. A lot of frustration in the home crowd on that one. The foul ends the threat for Charleston, who just won the ball back. See it again. Let's appear to get some of the man. Let's take a look at it. You can definitely see the foot coming together. It's a fall through action. Explosive. Those are the studs that catches her there on the back end of it. Hackshaw in the middle of the park. Holds off Allen. Rodriguez, they work it wide. Nice move. Cross goal centrally. Oh, just off for Oakland. A lot of frustration pounding the turf. Ryan Hur was right on hand, just couldn't get a foot to it. Play between the lines. You get numbers in around that 18 yard box, just crashing the critical parts of the goal. John Rodriguez makes this near post run, and as he makes that near post run, it draws out Palma, and it's her, essentially, just so unlucky not to get any sort of touch on that ball, and it's 2-0, the Oakland Roots. Talk about Wolfgang Prentice, he's been so good. Yeah. The quality of the service from that wide area, left foot, bending it into the path of the ongoing runs, just deserves more on the back end of that ball. Didn't get any minutes in the first few matches of the season. They felt that, this was lost it forward, Muse will collect, they felt that, and some good depth in the wing back position. They wanted him to get some minutes. Loaned him out to forward Madison. Made some appearances in USL League One. Got some minutes under the belt. And he's now started a few matches. This one bounces kindly. Markanich has Williams. Left side, it's win. Tries to cut it back to Markanich. Leaves it for Traeger. Leaves it a little too short. A slide. Trying to play the pass. And it's cleared away. Ikaza. Goes centrally for Markanich. Trying to go back to him. Coming together in the box, it's still alive. Avila, Mikaz getting back to his feet. Dodson, his ball in, locked away, corner kick. Nane is a little slow to get up after that challenge. On the back of his right leg. Not a good sign there for Oakland. But both teams a bit of a breather as they get ready for this corner kick. I think it's a lunge here from Joseph Nane. Marcanis just tries everything to keep this thing alive, just falls a bit awkwardly. Yeah. Something you don't want. We just talked about how valuable he's been in Oakland Roots jersey. See when his right leg looked at after moving a little bit there. Lost both teams some a mini hydration break. The opportunity to get some water, a breather. Playing for a second half hydration breaks. So this is probably the best opportunity for the two teams to get some extended time as a pause. Again, the captain, Nane. I would hate for him to have to come off and shift things back around. Uh, currently looks to be a winning formula going with a 1 0 lead. But if Nane is forced to come off, which take it off the armband, definitely appears that his night is over. See 
not comfortable at all with that right leg. All right, Barry, please, get off the side. Gave the armband over. Let's go. Tamara Clementa. We helped off the pitch. AJ Patterson and Pierre Reedy also preparing to come on for the battery. As Oakland prepare for a forced change as Nane limps off the pitch. You can see is Robert Avila. Robert Avila went off the pitch. Some small changes for Charleston. Again, they made 70th minute subs last. They made three of them. Came back. One goal down to a 2-1 lead. Tarek Morad comes back on. He started last match. Return from the bench coming on for Nane. Charleston's have actually not gone through just yet. This one, though, has Nane off. Kaza near post, trying to flick it on. It's out of the way. And breaking our Oakland. It's a one-man show currently. Brilliant tackle. Win the ball back. Referee wants to pull it back. Trainers will be again brought on. Not a good sign for Oakland again as Blanchett is down after that corner kick situation. Your attention for Oakland. Coming out of the match number four, Joseph Nani. Coming into the match number six, Tariq Moore. Pierre Reedy, now we're coming on. Roberto Avila. And Eli Lyon. Getting on the pitch. Also coming on, AJ Patterson. He's made 16 starts this year. Recovering from a knock, will be coming on for Leland Archer. Some, some interesting subs to Charleston. Trying to change things tactically versus Oakland. Their sub out of necessity. Be interesting. Let's we'll start with the Oakland Roots. What Neville Hackshaw does, will he play centrally in the center of the park now? You drop in Murad in the back line of three, or you just put in Murad centrally? That's exactly what I think is seems to be happening. The relationship between Tark Murad and Gomez now needs to be very good to see this game out. Referee. Referee Whistle will produce the yellow card. We can see confirmation of who that was. That was Ding for the foul on the far side of the pitch, but the match getting a little cagey, a little bit of an awkward last few moments. Definitely favors the visitors who would love for no flow to really develop for the hosts. Make the defensive job a bit easier. With this stop start match they've had last 10 minutes or so. Pass intercepted. Ryan Hur was given the yellow card, as you see in the top left of your screen. Brought to you by Spinks. Yellow card brought to you by Spinks Convenience Stores, located across Jordan South Carolina, tossed in, headed away. To open player number 16, Ryan Hur. That yellow card brought to you by Spinks in the 72nd minute. Turn pass just too strong for Traeger. Williams trying to press. You got Hackshaw who's dropped back. Plays out to the left. Prentice. Barbier. Working up left hand side. Slide tackle important. Staying alive. Rodriguez is around it. Oakland persistent. Space opens up, shot blocked. It'll spin out on the left side of the corner flag. So it'll be a throw in for the Roots. They've tried long throws from Hackshaw. That's an opportunity here. They look like they're going to be doing that. It's going to be Memo Diaz in it over it. See Gomez's shot. Well blocked by Allen. Goes out, corner kick given. Oakland again progressing, trying to keep the pressure up. They've had a few good opportunities, Ricky. They just haven't been able to get it over the line to make it 2-0. Exactly like you said, Jack, just slowing this game down, making life very difficult for the home side just to get in any sort of rhythm. You can 
get one back here for Nolto God on a set piece. Will be a dream scenario for the visitors here in the Ogun Roots. Whipped in towards the back post. Headed away on the first try, dueling for it. Knocked clear by Palma. Hackshaw's pass intercepted by Dodson. Ikaz is there. Reedy gets to it. Pierre Reedy in some space. Takes it into the box, across goal, just past Williams. Half step away from making it 1-1. Augie Williams, how many times has that been the case today? Just off on these passes from the right-hand side. It's Pierre Reedy, nice progression. Fires one, again, just off the timing. But that run from Augie Williams is just so exquisite for a number nine, because it does two things. If you get on the end of it, it's an easy tap-in for the player that quality. Secondary and pulls out Neville Hackshaw, pulls out a center back to open up space for a secondary run. That's what was lacking as this ball from Reedy that he just smacks this thing across the dangerous area. There's no one at the back post to tap it in. Tackle by Ikaz in the middle of the park. Screams of a yellow card from the Oakland bench, but it'll avoid that. Oakland will get it back going quickly and switch it to Prentice on the left hand side. Being Prentice in field for Gomez. Yeah, it's a bit of a heavy touch. Stay with this side. Touch out wide. Cedeno falls down dramatically. He'll draw the foul. Contact looked to be Ikaza. That was not Ikaza in the book yet. 77 minutes in, he's just been tackling Cedeno, especially in the second yeah. half. I think if you're Noel Delgado, you have to be barking at the fourth. Challenge after challenge. These are not easy. These are not just regular yeah. challenges. The extension of the arm around the neck area. He's a very lucky man not to get yeah. to see a yellow card. I'm sure that was part of the appeals after the foul was given by Oakland, just making that point that he's made a lot of, lot of these fouls. Free kick from the right-hand side. Opportunity. Memo Diaz whips it in. Over everybody, and Ikaza gets a foot to it. Hackshaw. Switch of play. Headed across goal. Caught by Muse. Dangerous, though. They continue to be. Allen. Nice fake, and he's got a lot of space he can now roam into. Augie Williams to his left. Nice run by him. Pass picks him out. Augie Williams. Into the box, bounces back to him kindly. Second attempt at a pass, blocked out for a corner kick. And those are situations that if you're the Charleston Valley that you can catch out this Oakland root side. You slow things down, you draw them out, trying to play out of the back. And then it all comes down to decision making. See again, Allen, just a great pass to break it between the defenders. Augie Williams trying to create something from the left wing. Earns a corner kick. Cosmo will over to take. All the crowd trying to get their side back in this one. Ikaz whips it in. Back post header. Saved, I believe. Not sure you know much about it. Blanchett still alive. Hooked away. What a chance for Charleston again. Allen got ahead to it. It falls for Ikaza. Staying in front of his defender. Rodriguez, vigilant with him, passes to his midfield partner, Allen. Whips one towards the back post. Blanchett's there on hand, and he can just catch it and fall to the ground. That was a weird corner kick. The swooping run here from Palma just gets free at that back post, and like you said, doesn't know much about it, stays his ground, lets the ball hits him. 
big chest for Paul Blanchett. That's why he's called Paul the Wall out in Oakland. Save after save, big time save after big time save, and none other than that one. Saw Traeger and Gomez were tussling. They both went down. Both teams will be eager for every tiny advantage they can get. This match, switch of play. Dangerous one, brilliant touch though by Prentice. Reedy's on hand, recollects. Pierre Reedy taking it wide to the right, to the byline. Low one, blocked away. And roll kindly for Dodson. Reedy, Dodson. Low, Traeger. One of our subs. It's on the ball there. Win. There's Palma. Hey, let's go, let's go, 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 Deeper. Patterson. Allen turns up field, trying to stay with it. The defensive midfielder still alive. Slide tackle, knocks it away. Corner kick earned. Chris Allen, known for his work off the ball a lot. A grafting performance. Yellow Mikaza, he won't get that fabled yellow card that we were talking about. That he was alluding. Robbie Croft will be coming on. Just pure will from Allen. He's really grown in the second half, not giving up on the play, just getting on the ball, having the confidence and the willingness to drive his side forward. Beats Memo Diz in a 50-50 ball, draws a corner kick. We talked about how dangerous the battery would were in the last corner kick. So you're looking at that back post. Especially with this man over the ball. Crawford with the quality, the right foot that he likes to whip in a ball in. He'll take the corner. Lanchette's on hand, got some fists to it, knocked it away. Allen under some pressure from Rodriguez. Cedeno in the press. Win. Awkward header. They got options. Three on three, a lot of space. Rodriguez just passed him, we'll have to recollect it. Tries the first time pass, it's blocked out. It's an awkward decision from Declan Wynn. As he put this ball, just miss hits it. It's her that picks up that second ball. I would expect Palma to foul there. Transition moment, not on the yellow card, the center back. You take a professional foul, you slow down. It's fortunate that the ball into John Rodriguez is a bit heavy that sends him wide. away so kind of slow fall as well just a strange sequence Williams though some nice hold up play drawing a lot of attention he will win a foul Memo Diaz did not hear the whistle and he kept attacking for it just a strange sequence Allen Seven minutes for them to find an equalizer. They've been so good from losing positions. They made it one too many times for them to try and work their way back into it. Lofted forward. Hackshaw's there. Wow, a lot of calmness to bring it down. Did he foul his defender? He did. Put his opponent down. Be a free kick. A very interesting spot if they want to go directly to the box. And these are so tricky for a goalkeeper. One of an in swinger aiming for right on top of the corner, that six yard box, because if no one touched it, it could squeak into that far post to cause chaos between the back line and Paul Blanchett. Big opportunity for the Charleston batter here. Robbie Crawford came out a few moments ago off the bench, hoping that another super sub impact. Crawford whips it in. Header just wide of goal. People thought it was a goal. They're still applauding that <laughs> one because it hit the side netting. And, and I'm sure by a lot of angles, look at that one was in. Marcanich, Marcanich again with a great opportunity. He heads it back across where it came from. Probably a better opportunity to test Paul Blanchett. 
There's also a secondary action of players making that near post run. You put it back into the traffic area, good things will happen. Closed angle, wrong side of the post for Mercanix once again. Crowd fool, they thought they had an equalizer. A difficult header to pull off. This one rolls out with an open throw. background, Ben Pierman making his case for some <laughs> additional added time. You can just see Pierman frustrated on the sideline. They know they've gotten some late, late winners this season. Patterson, the 90th minute winner at Hartford. Tampa Bay, down 1-0. Williams had a 94th minute winner. Arturo Rodriguez had a 94th minute winner. The home match against Hartford, all of those are matches that came from behind to eventually win with late winners. Packshaw. Blocked. Goes out for a throw. Frustrated Ben Pierman. He wants to keep it alive, making three wins on the bounce. They won 3 1 last time they were here against Pittsburgh. They have a tough three match road stretch coming up. Foul committed. Oh, there was some excellent man management at the time. Possession for Charleston. 14 shots to the six for their opponents. One goal though to zero. The Roots lead the battery. Clementa in the captain's arm after Nane went off. Prentice whips one in. Rodriguez was on hand. It's headed back where it came from towards Rodriguez and Muse were in there first. Cuts it back. Well controlled by Crawford. Experienced Scottish midfielder. Pass trying to pick out Williams. Heavy touch by Hackshaw. Sedeno scoops it over. Flag stays down. In behind. Ryan Herr. Can he put one on frame? It was a touch line. He overran things. Given a bit of quality and energy since coming off the bench, Ryan Hurt, their willingness to get in behind this back line for the Charleston battery, making things happen. So I think if you're Nell Delgado, you have to be very pleased with the, just the insertion of Ryan Hurt here tonight. Foul committed. Frustration from Markanich. We'll take it quickly. Subs being prepared for Oakland. Right-hand side. Brought down. Reedy has it. Mekanich. Now to the left. Win. Takes a deflection. It sits up kindly. Crawford's shot blocked away. Allen will sweep up. Gets there first, but a nice bit of support. Great Rodriguez, ball. beautiful pass. Picks up Cedeno, he's making a supporting run. Rodriguez in space, can he pick him out? Vital slide tackle though. Goal saving potentially. Rodriguez still down holding his leg. He's frustrated with no foul call. He may have been hurt there. Allen clips it up. Drager was there, can't get to it. 
Now to Traeger. Williams making a run, underlapping. He goes down to the box. Referee waves him back to his feet. It's cleared out of play. No stop now. I believe Rodriguez still down. I think if you're Sedania, you're getting your in this position. You hit that ball with your right foot, just bend it into the yeah. path of Rodriguez. You slow things down, playing it behind you, give Allen the ability to drop down, and that's, there's nothing in that. Yeah. Danny Barbier just a little touch on Aguilar, looking for the, the pen. Would have been extremely harsh for J.C. Griggs to point to the spot. You can almost see the gears going through Augie's head as, as he receives that one in the box. He knows that if he can get across the defender, might be able to get something going. Coming on, as you can see on your screen, Napo Matsoso. Sedano had an opportunity to get an uh, assist right before coming off the pitch. Maybe off for Matsoso. Strong performance from him. Johnny Rodriguez off. Lies. Just to bring it off their first choice options. Players to see the match out with energy and legs. We're about to get confirmation of stoppage time. That substitution going in. You're going to see Pelaez now. He's just going to stay high. He's going to occupy and be a focal point to play off of for the open roots. A different profile than Johnny Rodriguez and for this man, Napo Matsoso. He's going to sit right in front of this back line and just be a difference maker, clog the passing lanes and make life very difficult to play through the Charleston battery. Extra time is brought to you by MUSC Health Sports Medicine. Nine minutes of added time, and we haven't even gotten into it yet. So we, I think, Ricky, strap in. I think we're breaking 100 minutes on this one. The referee has just indicated nine minutes of additional time. Injury time is sponsored by Coming on, Andrew Booth as well for Chris Allen. Most aggressive sub, trying to bring him on. Last goal was the equalizer at Miami. Another one of those points that got back from a losing position. Andrew Booth has a very good feel of when to show up in very big moments. Late trailing run from a deep line position in the center of the park, but also the quality that he possesses on his right foot. Johnny Rodriguez after that slide tackle in behind, he's still down. He's been subbed out, so he'll be coming out of the match. Looks to be in a good deal of discomfort. And the implication here is that we might, we might hit three minutes into the stoppage time without getting any of it going, which means that that minimum of nine which we begin when we resume going here. Coming out for Rodriguez. His right leg is the one that's causing him the source of discomfort. Keep it going. I know you can get louder. We can look at it again and see what caused Rodriguez the discomfort that he's going through right now. So much played in behind for him. It's nearly a great opportunity. Sedano trying to pick him out. Vital slide tackle. Looks like his ankle just gets kind of caught up awkwardly. And he knows it right away as well. You see when he goes down straight to hobbling off the sideline. Must also be support from the Charleston medical staff just helping him get off the pitch. Pierman giving some time to bark out instructions to his team, try and help them find one last moment, one last opportunity for Oakland. They know that they've got nine minutes to dig in, try and see up three points. Lies, as well as about Soso coming on. They're bringing on the players to just see this one out. After about a three and a half minute stoppage, the referee is ready to get us back underway. Here we are. Nine minutes of stoppage time. More or less begins now. Okay. 
Patterson. Win. Booth, his first touchdown coming on. Palma. Dodson. He's scoring the winner, but on the wrong end. Booth turns his opponent. Maybe in a tug of the shirt. Win. Traeger an option on the left hand side. Crawford. Dodson had a lot of space on the right hand side if they want him. Crawford. Clipped forward. Touchdown. Crawford carrying it forward. Slides it in. Nice turn. It's cleared away. Staying with it was win. Whipped in. Mark Hanich, it's headed away. Booth. Win. Caught by the keeper. Blanchett. He'll be in no rush. Oakland going to begin all the time bleeding techniques that they've got in their locker. High header. Gomez gets a foot to it. Working on the right hand side. Reedy moving it forward. Knocked down. Advantage being played. Brought down again, referee calls foul this time. That one will produce a yellow card. Prentice being booked for that one. Prentice, he won't complain about that too much though. Stops a chance before it can develop into anything else. If you're, if you're the Oakland Roots, you have to be very careful where you're fouling yep. on the field because if it's too close to the box, pump a quality service in and anything can happen. We talked about you bring Robbie Crawford for Charleston Battery, the quality of service that he possesses to put the ball in a dangerous area and cause chaos within your back line and test Paul Blanchett. They're going to put this one direct. Also in a lot of space though, closer is win if they want to just go with the short option. They launch it into the box. Over everybody. Whipped in. Headed away. Last touch by Oakland. This one's staying with Charleston. If they can't get there in time, and it goes just out. Just too quick. Tossed in. Williams trying to get to it. Augie Williams. Holding off Barbier. Cross blocked. Corner kick given. It's Crawford. Off the bench. Header towards goal, just wide. Blanchett falls to his knees. Thankful that another one, another header in the box going just wide of goal. Dotson does very well to just rise up and just hits it in the wrong angle. Tries to flick it onto that far post, just doesn't get enough on it. Beats his individual mark, to be fair, over Nabil Hackshaw. See the frustration on his face. See Dotson. Got on the header there. He was unfortunately the one who scored the own goal. Not much he could have done about it. Just tracking back took an unfortunate bounce off of him. That's what separates the two sides currently. Header, Traeger on hand. Booth trying one over the top. Williams running towards it. Hackshaw with a vital header. He wanted a foul, nothing given. Trying one over the top, running onto it. Flag goes up, foul also committed. Lies, though that's what his job is going to be. So we're in the 99th minute, but we'll probably have a few more based on just the injury from Rodriguez in the first three and a half minutes of our stoppage time. Booth, pass intercepted. Trying to play their way out of it, and they'll knock it clear. Win to Booth. Lofted forward. Headed away by Hackshaw. It's just kind of 
hold the ball in his own corner. Wins a goal kick. A lot of frustration as well there. That will likely produce a yellow card. It will indeed. <laughs> Pierre Reedy. Frustration boiling over. He slams the ball on the ground, runs across the referee's flag. I mean, take your pick for what you're in the yellow card for. The yellow card brought to you by Spinks Convenience Stores, located across South Carolina. Now in the 99th minute, now in the 100th minute of this one. Up to the referee. How much additional time we get beyond the additional? Blanchett. Goes wide, out, throw in. Ball's in play. Oakland has one back. Morad, out wide, left side. Lofted over the top. The flag stay down. Will not. Offside's given. Fall down off the ball. Some clever work. Pilais knows what he's doing, trying to just drag out more and more time. You know, his controversy is better than goals against. Win. Switch of play. by Prentice. Booth trying to track over to get it. He'll get there. Played forward. Pilai's trying to play a one-two. It was blocked. They'll go with the quick throw, and he just wasn't paying attention. If he was focused, he would have been able to have been one-on-one. -on -one. Oakland turns it over carelessly. <coughs> down is Prentice. We're in the 102nd minute. If you just add, Ricky, the, the three and a half we were supposed to get on top of the nine, we were looking at about 103 minutes of play. Now with this stoppage for Prentice, we might get a few more. It's, uh, it's kind of insane. It has to be probably one of the longest regular season games we've <laughs> had in the USL Championship. I would love to know the latest a goal was scored in a match in the USL Championship because if anybody scores for either team, you're getting close to it once you get to this point. I think the, the Premier League in England beginning to look at adding like the World Cup style stoppage time where it's much more accurate to how much the ball is out of play. But you see Prentice going down. This match has been going on for over 100 minutes. Both teams are exhausted. See if Prentice can see out the rest of this one. We have no idea how much more added time will be given on in this one. Could be as much as three. It could be more, obviously. You never know what can happen. Some fireworks. Nearing 10 p.m. local time. Well, it's about 9.38 local time here in South Carolina. Moved to the left-hand side. 103 minutes into this one. Booth clips it. Blanchett's there. He'll fall on it. All eyes will be on the referee in these moments. Oakland willing the whistle to his lips. Charleston is hoping for one last opportunity. Blanchett goes long. Booth flicked on. Win. Intercepted. That's so so. Thought about one. And went a throw for his side. Again, all of the time wasting techniques in full force. I thought about doing it quick down the touch line. Charleston staff upset with the position that they've been taking the throws in from. Diaz launches it. Foul committed. Elias goes to the ground, wins a foul for his team. Exactly what you want from a substitute to come on 
win fouls, be a nuisance, even if he doesn't get on the score sheet, that's vital on a yellow card produced. Just shows the experience for Pelize. That's why you go out and get him if you're the Oka Roots. Probably had him mentioned as a starter going to be just a game changer because Ozark Carlson goes back over to Europe. Who is going to really gain that responsibility? And as AJ Patterson comes across, probably not a lot of contact, but yeah. he makes the most of it. And that's exactly what we've talked about, Jack. Yeah. Slowing the game down, the dark arts, that I like to call it, mm -hmm. to see out the massive three points that this would be for the Hilton Roots. 90 plus 15. <laughs> Insane. <laughs> <laughs> Man. We have 15 additional minutes now. And the play is in the corner. Goal kick. Muse will use the ball that was knocked out of play. Give it back to him. Muse under a bit of pressure. Pelize would love to just see this one out. Guarantee it with the second goal. Charleston, as long as there's still time in this match, there's still a tiny bit of life for a point at home. Patterson evades Pelize. Launched forward, cleared away. That will do it. 106 minutes, agonizing for the visitors, but enough in the end. They see it out and earn the three points, 1-0. They take this one. Ricky, your final thoughts on that one? Probably not the prettiest of matches for the Yoko Roots, but at this point in the season, it doesn't need to be pretty. It needs to be effective. All three points in the pockets going back to the West Coast, so give credit to Noel Delgado. Defensively spot on, especially in the second half, not letting this Eastern Conference Giants get in any sort of any sort of flow, and that's exactly what the doctor ordered for the Oakland Roots. Tonight's Heineken man of the match is Chris Allen for the hosts, was all over the pitch in this one, winning the ball up and down the pitch. Well, it was certainly an interesting one. We were given a plethora of football in South Carolina, ending one goal to nil in favor of the Roots. We've got full-time stats and highlights to come for you in just a moment on the other side of this break on ESPN+. Plus. Think big. Something life-changing. I'm talking education. Let's get inventive. Blow things up in a good way. Do it for 20 years? Wake up and education has received billions in funding. Who does all this? If you've ever played one of these or these, that would be you. Yeah, thank you. Charleston is located in the low country of South Carolina. The history here, it runs deep and you can't imagine being any place else. This place is magical. Final from Patriots Point Soccer Complex. Oakland won, Charleston nil. Took a long, long time to see the conclusion of that one. Getting into 106 minutes. I'll show you the full-time highlights of a fascinating one. These highlights brought to you by Bud Light. Looking at them again. Could have been the most spectacular goal we've, all, we've seen all season from Johnny Rodriguez, an early opportunity for Oakland. Almost goal of the season. Just takes us out of a hat. The audacity to even try this ball coming over your shoulder. He hits it so well, to be fair just denied by the crossbar, but he talked about being having the balance for the Oka Roots. Too many times it was Hackshaw and Gomes yep. getting pulled out, and Augie Williams was so active, but just so unlucky not to pick out a corner straight at Paul Blanchett. We can dig now in, as I want you to say by Blanchett, league leader in saves, continuing to be a big time. This is the goal, an own goal for Derek Dotson. Bit of unfortunate, but really nice work to progress by Oakland. Really nice decision making from Memo Diaz just to put it up and over the back line, but give credit to Danny Barbier for yep. one, for two things. He keeps himself on side, but also has the right idea to put it across goal and you get rewarded for your hard work. The Oakland Roots, they snag a goal right before halftime. Here, some Charleston opportunities. 
Markinich was involved in things and creating opportunities. Took more shots this match than any battery player this season with five. An opportunity there. They just couldn't quite get it off. Some more opportunities for Matt Markinich, who was just dominant throughout the second half. Just the spacing that he would pick up as this ball rotates back onto him. He needs to hit this with his right foot. If you hit it with your left foot, it needs to be first time. Yep. Low and hard to that near post. Second touch. Right foot, far post. Just gets it all wrong. You see balance is falling off. That's why you see it go wide of the goal. And another big time save for Paul Blanchett. Doesn't know a ton about it. Just saves it with his chest. Just big in front of that one. Keeps it out of the back of the net. Just keeps the name real. Paul the wall stands right between the sticks. Doesn't know anything. Stays his ground right off the chest. Hey, you do your job. Oakland Roots get all three points going back to the Oakland side. And the stats favoring the hosts in all but the most important one goals. One to nil, the Roots taking it despite just 36% possession. Final thought from you, Ricky, on this one. I think it was just all about managing moments and critical moments for the Oakland Roots. Probably not the best first half or second half, but most effective. You get all three points at this, pay, this stage in the season. That's all you can ask for. Good teams understand we don't need to play our best football to take all three points. And for Ben Pierman, you need to be a bit cleaner when you get in that final third because too many times it broke down. Well, the three points heading the way of the Roots. They keep their unbeaten streak alive, heading to six games now and end the same five-game one for Charleston with a 1-0 win. For Charleston, they hit the road, taking on Louisville City next up. Roots, bit of a break next up on August 19th, back at home in Oakland against Colorado Springs switchbacks. So Ricky Lopez Espin, I've been Jack Edwards. For our entire production crew, final from Charleston. Charleston nil, Oakland one. This copyrighted telecast of the United Soccer League Championship cannot be retransmitted, rebroadcast, or reproduced without the expressed written consent of the United Soccer League Championship.